In this video, we're going to be opening up this box and taking our very first look at the brand new APC image stabilized binoculars from Kite Optics. And we're going to start right now. Hello, my name is Jason and welcome to another unboxing video here on BBR where I open up a package for the very first time and give you my initial thoughts and opinions of whatever is contained within. So today, as we can see from the sticker on the outside, I'm fairly certain that this box comes from Kite Optics. What's inside? I'm also fairly certain that is their brand new and really exciting APC image stabilized binoculars. As to the model, I'm keeping my fingers crossed that it's their um, most powerful 16 by 42 millimeter version. So without any more delays, let me swap the camera around and let's get on with the unboxing. Right, so welcome back to this side of the table and let's get on with the unboxing. Okay, so as, as I open up this box, I firstly just want to, um, my blade needs sharpening, um, offer a few, just mention that as this is a true unboxing and it's completely unscripted, I just want to apologize in advance for all the humming and hawing I may do and um, perhaps waffling a little um, without a script I tend to just get um, sidetracked quite a lot and on top of that also um, just apologize for the condition of my hands I've been out chopping firewood and um, I managed to damage my hand a little bit the other day quite a bit so I apologize for that in advance Ooh, sorry about the noise right so there you go, the first look, definitely this box came from Kite Optics now, we know that for, for a fact. Um, let me just put this box away and out of the way. Right, look at that. Um, as I always say in my unboxing videos, I really do like packaging. I actually come from a, a design background where my job once was to make um, packaging. It was mostly for food stuff, so not quite as exciting as binoculars. But I do appreciate nice packaging, and this I gotta say looks really nice and smart. Um, has a nice design to it. I'm just trying to figure out. Okay, so it's just a sleeve that goes on the outside. For uh, I think for mostly for the benefit of our North American viewers here on BBR, Kite Optics is I, get, I think fairly um, unknown in the in the US and Canada, but here in Europe or in Europe. They are very well respected, especially amongst the birding community, where they make um, really high-end um, binoculars, spotting scopes, and things like, like that. So I've written, I've done a number of reviews of their products and always been seriously impressed. So if you haven't checked them out, do check out the link down below. It'll take you through to some of the other reviews that I've done on their products, their binoculars um, and such. And you know, who knows, maybe you, I can introduce you to a new brand that you might have not known about before. Um, as I said, they, make, they genuinely make really high-end binoculars um, and spotting scopes, um, mostly for the birding, but they also um, target the hunting market somewhat. Um, it's a Belgian company. Um, I believe it's a family-run business. Okay, so our first look at what's inside, and as we can now definitely confirm, we are going to be looking at some the APC stabilized binoculars. As I say, this is a, a brand new range of binoculars to um, Kite Optics, and indeed their first ever, I believe their first ever image stabilized binoculars. Now, it's been a while since I've reviewed any, there we go, as I said, they're from Belgium. The first time, I mean, it's been in, uh, probably over five years since I last tested an image IS binocular um, and that was the Canon which I, I, I guess is what you would call the market leader um, but the interesting thing that's been explained to me about these you know and the brief discussions I've had with the guys from Kite Optics is the fact that I think the Canons if I'm, I'm not correct and incorrect in saying I think they are able to correct about um, less than a degree of movement whereas um, what they're really excited about with these kites IS binoculars is they are able to correct two degrees of movement. So that's going to be super interesting once I get a chance to take these out in the field and give them a good test. So for now we're just taking a look at the um, instruction manual. It is in a number of languages. So it's not quite as comprehensive as, as the sort of thickness 
suggests. But anyway, I'm sure we will get through it. As always with Kite, Kite Optics, in, in my experience with their binoculars, they it comes supplied with a really good set of lens cleaning cloths. I mean, you don't, with most binoculars, even high-end ones, you, you maybe get one cleaning cloth. Here yeah, we've got four, so that's really good because what's really nice about that is because um, no matter how good the cloth is, is if, if it gets some dirt on it, um, if, if, it's, if it's still there and then you wipe the dirt onto the actual lens, you've got a chance of scratching the um, coatings on that lens. Well, and that's why having new cloths um, is, is actually really nice. As always, I mean, on top of this, I would always suggest that if you really want to look after your optics to the, you know, the maximum, it would be good to get a, a complete optic cleaning kit. Um, again, I have links down below to how to probably clean um, your binoculars and spotting scopes and things like that. Right, so off to an excellent start with the, the lens cleaning cloths. Should we go, let's go with the do them accessories first. Let's keep everyone in suspense for the, the main course, shall I? Um, okay, so then the weight of the binoculars um, I briefly looked at in the specifications is not that much more without batteries compared to a standard set of binoculars. But having said that, once you've put, I think, four AA batteries go into the device, it only uses two, um, and the other two are just um, backup. So once once you've run through the two, it, it'll, it'll switch over to the, the backup set. But four AA batteries, you know, is reasonably heavy. So the fact um, that this comes with what looks to be an excellent, I mean, truly excellent neck strap. I mean, look at that. Um, nice and wide. So that's going to um, distribute weight nice and widely over your shoulders and around your neck. On top of that, I do like this material underneath. It's not quite as grippy as I have it on some, so it might slide about just a little bit. But having said that, the padding is, is super. There's plenty of padding there, so it's going to be nice and comfortable, no doubt. Um, the detailing is fantastic. I mean, look at the stitching. Perfect. I like the fact it's red. I mean, usually they, they blend it in. Um, as I was saying, the, the detailing on the stitching is, looks fantastic and the quality of it is excellent. Um, this may be a fake leather, but if it is, it's a good fake. Um, yeah, I think it is, but it, it's, it's really, really good. It's nicely branded, so this is definitely not some cheap generic lin um, neck strap that I often come across these days. So a really good quality neck strap. Um, one thing I will mention, its attachment system is going to be a slider with a loop so you can adjust the length. Um, the only point I'd mention here, is, which is a slight shame, is it doesn't have a, like a quick release clip or something like that. You know, it just makes it that just much easier to swap out your neck strap should you wish to. But other than that, the quality is fantastic. Um, I really do like that neck strap. All right, next up, I'm guessing, let's have a look what else. I'm gonna, this is going to be the strap for the actual carry case. It's got some twisters, so it shouldn't twist up too easily. Um, it's unpadded, but you can adjust its length, so not much more to say there. Right, so let's take our first look. The carry case. Once again, um, as with all the Kite Optics binoculars I've tested in the past, the case is definitely not generic. They've got, it's nicely branded. So that's a stitched little sort of rubber. It's actually raised. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. Um, so it's raised up over there, so that's really quite nice. Um, it's got a belt loop in the back, and I know this would perhaps be for many people a bit too heavy to carry around on your hip, but it would be possible. Um, it is nice that you can remove the strap and, and be able to do this because what happens sometimes is you get a carry strap with a belt loop on the back, but you can't remove the strap. You know, it's permanently attached to the, the case, which uh, always perplexes me somewhat. I like the fact it's got a separate uh, little pocket there, you know, keep your, your ample. Um, lens cleaning cloths and some extra change or whatever. Right, ta -da. let's get on with the main course, shall we? Um, just interesting, let's just, before we go, the inside of the case is nice and padded. Perhaps not quite as well padded as um, I would have hoped with an electronic device, but it, you know, it's not bad, it's not, uh, you know, and perhaps the case for an electronic device Again, just I'm thinking aloud here, might have been a bit more of a semi-rigid construction. So you, you would just have to make sure that you look after it a bit more than you would if it was a you know a more solid constructed case. 
Right, so let's take a first look at the actual binoculars themselves, shall we? Okay, so first up, yeah, just to confirm that we, we are actually looking at the 16 by 42 millimeter version. So a very high powered pair of binoculars. Um, I have actually seen images of this device on the internet. So I did kind of have a slight expectation of, of what I was going to experience. But I have to say, even so, when you first look at it, it does look quite a lot different to your typical pair of binoculars. I mean, I keep on wanting to either open or close the central hinge there. And as you can see, these binoculars uh, don't have a, a central central hinge for um, bringing the eye cups or the eye pieces closer and further apart. Just so you can adjust for depending on, you know, your, your the distance between your actual your eyes. So as you can see, the eyepieces themselves, they, they have their own um, mechanism and you can actually just pull one and it actually makes them both come closer and nearer apart. The minimum eye to BD is, is very narrow there. So as you can see, these would be suitable for anyone who has really um, close set eyes. It wouldn't, wouldn't be a problem at all. Um, even children could, have, could potentially use these, which again, especially with the mid-sized options, could, could be a uh, you know, it would be an expensive present for a child, but the fact that they image stabilized would, would be very useful for a, a child, which, you know, they often have very unsteady hands. Okay, so the actual, the mechanism itself is, it's got a lot of resistance to it. Um, so it's, it's quite difficult to, well, I wouldn't say difficult, but, you know, you have to be very positive to, to move it, which I think is a good thing, because otherwise you would have these eyepieces opening and closing when you don't want them to do, which would obviously become a really annoying. Um, I'm just going to go back to the actual overall body and feel of this device. It, it feels very, it feels very comfortable. I like, the, I like the shape of it. So holding it in your hand, I can imagine it being very comfortable. I'm just, you know, trying to imagine holding it upright like that. But um, so this way you're, you know, you can have your palms resting underneath. Um, and I will say that the, the actual um, armor, armoring on it, or the rubber covering, is not, not so much an armoring because it's extremely thin, but like a camera. So um, perhaps doesn't offer as much impact resistance as a thicker rubber would, but in terms of its grippiness, it's extremely tactile. Um, you can already see some dust in that gathering on the outside of the, the instrument. So I better actually do my photography for the review before taking it outside to test, because otherwise all, all my photographs are going to be covered. You know, the, the, the device will be covered in dust and it'll mess up in the photographs um yeah but it, it's nice and tactile which obviously is really good in terms of the grippiness so less chance of of this falling out of, out of your hands and onto the floor where that would could be disastrous so i would definitely suggest using this um binocular with its neck strap at all times um, even though that the, the outside is, is nice and grippy. And, and I have to say that the shape of the body is, is very well designed. It, it definitely is going to feel very nice in the hands. Um, so we've spoken about the, um, the IPD setting. So being able to adjust it depending on the width between your eyes. I don't, offhand, I don't know the, the maximum and minimum settings. Uh, obviously, I'll have all that um, information in the full review once it goes up on the BBL website. So yeah, um, on the front, we obviously have the two objective lenses. Um, interesting to note straight away, um, they're 42 millimeters in diameter, so fairly typical for a binocular. But as you can see, what is not typical is just how close together they are. Um, it's quite strange indeed. Um, I'm not sure the exact reason why they would have to have done like this. Um, I mean, for most poroprism binoculars, um, the advantage of the old-fashioned poroprism binoculars is the fact that their objective lenses are, are generally further apart than the eyepieces. Now, the advantage of that is that they tend, or you know, sometimes that you know, it's really hard to observe these things or notice them. But they, in theory, they'll have a better stereoscopic view than than binoculars, um, than standard roof prism binoculars that have objective lenses that are the same distance between um, the eyepieces. As you can see, these are even closer together than a, a typical roof prism binocular. This I'll have to, you know, I'll take special note of um, to, to, to look at when I'm testing these binoculars out in the field. And once again, all the information will be in the review. On the outside of the objective lenses, we have these two here. 
and I know exactly what they're for. They're for the, the batteries, which I think is quite a novel way or place to put them. And it's um, quite interesting in that, um, as you can see, there are a place for uh, batteries on both sides. Um, this one's empty, but I'll just show you here. You can see that the device is on. <laughs> so how's that happening? Well, the interesting thing about these is that, yes, they take four AA batteries that I've, I've read in the uh, specifications. But actually, let me just turn it off first before I do this. Um, it's actually only um, two of them um, are used for powering the device. The other ones are just there. It's just like a storage for backup, which ooh, oh, sorry, I've done the same side twice. If I hold on, I tell you what, filming, thinking, and talking for me are hard to do all at once. <laughs> sorry about that. Okay, so yeah, I'll prove to you that they are batteries. They must be batteries, and yeah, there we go. So yeah, there's um, two AA batteries on each side. So it only it takes two batteries to power it. And from the specifications, it says, I think 120 hours battery life um, for, for four batteries, I think. I think that is for, uh, again, I'll confirm this all in the review once I've researched everything more thoroughly. The actual compartments is spring-loaded, you there? So it's a, first, it's a bit tricky to do this. Now, another important thing just to mention about this device, and I think it's quite well related to the to the batteries is in regards to it's and it's something I do know Kaita quite proud about is the fact that this device is fully waterproof. Unlike some of the smaller cannons um, which aren't waterproof, they may be just water protected. I think this is an IPX7 rating, which um, is means that it's fully waterproof. I think up to a depth of um, a meter for an hour or something like that. Again, something like that. So obviously these have to be have seals in them, so that um, once they're fully locked in, um, no water is going to get in there. So that's that's for an electronic device. That's you're going to use outdoors, um, come you know potentially in the rain or at least mist in that. The fact that it's waterproof is is an excellent, obviously an excellent feature to have. So yeah, battery compartments go there. Um, I like all these. So the, the branding on the side there, nice touch. Overall, this device has, a, has an excellent um, overall appearance and, and feeling of quality to it. I mean, it's, it's solid. It's, you know, it's, it's chunky, it's heavy, but not too heavy, if that makes sense. You know, you do feel like you're holding a, um, you know, it feels like an expensive Canon camera or something like that, you know. I'm bringing up another brand here, but you know what I mean. Uh, made in Japan, so you know, genuinely considered anything that's electronic and as well optics um, coming from Japan is always, you know, considered a good thing. So that's definitely not bad. I mean, overall, I think um, optically, I think Kite, and I don't have um, all the details in terms of the optics used in these yet, but I think Kite has positioned these um, to the higher end of the market in terms of just the optics. Then obviously now they've added electronics to it. And so this is def this is you know not a, a cheap device to own, but I think from you know my first impressions is it's a high quality one. You know you're not getting some cheap rubbish. It it's, it's genuinely looks extremely well made. Um, the way that the ocular lenses that that mechanism there is is nice and robust. It feels robust. You know, there's no movement here. The right eyepiece, you can see here we've got a diopter adjuster. Um, from the specifications and from memory, I think it's a, a range of plus or minus three. So that sh is pretty wide and so should accommodate most people who have um, quite um, vast differences between the eyesight and the, in your right and left eyes. The eye cups themselves. The mechanism again, nice and smooth. So there's no sticking points or anything like that. It's, it's a touch on the light side, so I can twist it up and down without much force at all. But having said that, it's got, oh, I do like that, it's got two intermediate click stops. So as you can see, you can position it there, and I can press, I have to press pretty firmly before it wants to twist down any further. So that's pretty good. So, you know, I think the 16 by 42 millimeter version has about 13 mils of eye relief. I can't remember. It looks, it looks reasonably ample. So should you wear glasses, you'd have it 
positioned probably this way and and your glasses would go in between and then without glasses th this space over here gets taken up by the eye cup so again in the review i will test these with wearing glasses and without just to make sure that you can actually use them whilst wearing glasses the focus wheel let's go have a look in terms of let's just think about its positioning so you would be holding the bar like this you know it's not in a, a standard position for a full-size binocular but it's it's easy to reach i like the way it's nice and wide so your hands can you know you can use either one or all three of your fingers like that or something like that in terms of its profile it's quite low profile which looks nice but i will say if you're wearing thick winter gloves it may be a touch you know a little bit more difficult to manipulate but the, the mechanism itself is really smooth, extremely smooth, I would say. Um, and we just have a look. So it takes about one turn, full turn of, of the wheel, I think, to go from uh, the minimum focus to the maximum and vice versa, which is a nice sort of medium in the fact that it, um, it's nice and quick to go from near to far. But at the same time, you know, obviously more turning would allow you to make fine adjustments just that much more easier. So this is sort of the mid ground. So overall, um, in terms of just the appearance and its feeling, um, very impressed. Um, right now, I'm just gonna, I'll tell you what, because we've got batteries, I wasn't actually, because I don't think the retail version comes with batteries. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna quickly um, test out the few for you guys, and I'm gonna come right back and give you my thoughts. Just give me one more moment. Right, so I've just looked through these binoculars um, through the window um, onto the fields behind me there. And I have to say, from first impressions, I'm extremely impressed. I mean, when you look through a high powered binocular like these, you know, with 15 or 16 times magnification, yes, you can use them without a tripod, but you always get just that little bit of image shake that, you know, constantly jittering in the background. Now, so no matter how good the image is, you're always um, not getting quite as much image detail as you would possibly like, just because of that little tiny little bits of image check, no matter how hard you try to keep your, your hands still. As soon as you um, turn this device on, I mean, within less than a second, it starts up. And straight away, it's it's almost as if the, the image um, sort of, is if you imagine a bubble in, in, in um in a spirit level or something like that. That's the sort of, I, I guess, how the experiences I would I'd sort of describe it. It straight away just um, levels out that sort of jittiness. So yes, if you move your hands, you, you sort of get, but it's, it's totally dampened. And you know, the difference is astounding. Um, turning on the IS doesn't uh, restrict the view or anything like that in any sort of a way. So it's exactly the same view that you were looking at um, before turning it on. It's just the fact that it's now, you know, a lot more stable. You know, I would equate it to something like a, a seven times binocular, you know, even better than, a, than an eight times, you know, and that's, you know, half the amount of magnification that these 16 times binoculars have. So yeah, um, from first impressions, the view, um, in, is especially in terms of the image stabilization, really excellent. I mean, if you're looking for a high powered binocular, or indeed that one of the lower ones, but want... Um, to have a, a steadier view possible, then yeah, this is this could be a way to go. As I said, um, I'm going to spend the next week or so testing these binoculars, taking them out in the field, giving them a thorough testing now. And in my review, I will compare them, you know, the statistics and compared to the, the cannons that I've um, tested out in the past. And we will compare them against each other. And I will have my, my full thoughts you know, and opinions in due course. So I'm going to leave this video there now for now. And I'll just say thank you um, really much for watching and, and putting through with my humming and hiring. <laughs> um, if, as always, if you have any questions, thoughts, opinions, please feel free to um, uh, use the comment section down below and I'll do my very best to get back to you. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again next time. Cheers for now.